I'm Jan Lanouette. I want to introduce you to the Florida Perinatal Quality Collaborative Maternal Opioid Recovery Effort. WHO, ACOG, the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the CDC all recommend universal screening for substance use in pregnant women. The faces of opioid use disorder really mirror our own faces. Opioid use disorder affects all ages and races, all economic and social strata, and all levels of education. Opioid addiction crosses all boundaries of race, sex, and socioeconomic status. This graphic represents the racial makeup of suspected drug overdoses in Florida in 2018. Identification of women with opioid use disorder early in pregnancy has been shown to improve maternal and infant outcomes. Anything other than universal screening can lead to missed cases and may add to stereotyping and stigma. Many women with opioid use disorder are fearful of sharing with obstetric providers because of past negative experiences and concerns about being separated from their newborn. We must create a safe and open atmosphere in which to screen. Screening should be done via a validated verbal or written screening tool. Several are recommended by ACOG. Universal screening with urine drug screens is controversial. It assesses only for current or recent use. A positive test is not diagnostic of opioid use disorder, and a negative test does not rule it out. Finally, Urine drug screens may not detect many substances, such as some synthetic opioids, which are increasingly being used. Women with opioid use disorder are seven times more likely to forego prenatal care. This is in large part related to past experiences with healthcare. When women face stigma in the health system, it reduces the quality of care they receive. It also makes the person less likely to follow through on a treatment program out of fear that they will face stigma again. It is important that we all monitor ourselves, reducing negative attitudes towards women who suffer from opioid use disorder, their friends and family members. We have to be vigilant about the use of negative labels in everyday conversation. There are several tips for effective screening tool implementation. First, reassure the patient that these are universally asked questions and that she is not being targeted. Assure the patient that these answers are confidential and will share, be shared only with her healthcare providers. Ask the questions in a non-judgmental way and try to create a safe space for the patient to volunteer information. An example of an easy screening tool that has been validated for use for pregnant women is the five Ps. These five quick questions can identify women with opioid use disorder or those at risk. After women complete the questions, any positive answers should be followed by a short conversation with a provider. This is the backside of the FPQC pocket card that can be used to guide the brief intervention. Positive reinforcement should be given for disclosing the information. Women may feel that they're taking a risk by answering truthfully, and it is important to reinforce that they're doing the best thing for their own health care and the health of their baby by disclosing the information. An attempt should be then be made to gauge the woman's willingness to engage in treatment. A plan of care can then be negotiated with the patient. If the woman is not ready for intervention, attempts can be made to assess any change in all future visits. All women with a positive screen should be offered a prescription for naloxone and instructed in its use. The importance of providing referral for all facets of treatment cannot be stressed enough, and lists of local referral networks should be readily available. Psychiatric disorders are more common in women with opioid use disorder, 30 to 40% having a diagnosis of clinical depression. This places them at increased risk for postpartum depression, so support services are essential. In addition, psychiatric comorbidities are independent predictors for more severe postoperative pain. The Department of Health and Human Services strongly encourages OBGYNs to provide buprenorphine treatment for women with opioid use disorders. 
the first step in providing medication-assisted treatment is to obtain a Drug Abuse Treatment Act of 2000 waiver to existing controlled substance pre prescribing requirements. Only about 5% of U.S. physicians currently have a waiver, severely limiting care for those who need it. There is also a movement suggesting that all OBGYN trainees graduate equipped to provide medication-assisted treatment with their patients with opioid use disorder. Postpartum contact, contact should always assess for signs and symptoms of postpartum depression. In addition to addressing mental health issues at every opportunity, patients will also need support to be able to care for family and continue their own care, such as medically assisted treatment. Following through on family planning desires is also critical. Rates of unintended pregnancy in women with opioid use disorder have been found to be about 80%, considerably higher than the general population, which is 30 to 45%. Thank you for watching this video and for wanting to do more for your patients.